Hey, how are you? I am back in studio mode today. I got asked to do um, a headline gig as part of Independent Venue Week at the Alex in Southampton. Um, and I love doing the live shows, I really do. Um, they're just a great way to like, you kind of learn so much about the songs and the music you're making if you go and take it out live and you kind of get that human reaction from it and you learn you know you kind of create a bunch of stuff you otherwise wouldn't have done and it's also super fun i've got this slightly funny relationship with technique if you kind of go right the way back to the beginning when i first started performing i was obsessed with this idea of, of it being all from the mouth this is off the bar from the mouth so i was like beatboxing beatboxing all from the mouth i even had a website called all from the mouth which was like an agency for beatboxers and i'd go to great lengths to kind of make sure the audience understood how much kind of went into all this technique that I created. Even when I started, you know, gave myself permission to do more than just have one microphone and, and I started like looping and layering up my voice, I'd still go to great pains to make sure everybody understood the technique. I was obsessed with the idea of doing it live in front of you. And then even later on, you know, when I kind of finally gave myself permission to use sounds that weren't created by the voice and I started triggering back you know, samples and um, synths and stuff that I'd created offline. I kind of created this big like TEDx talk called New Rules about how I decided to break my own rules. And like, I feel like you can kind of sometimes get it back to front. For me, surely the most important thing really is it's the music, right? It's, it's, it's the emotion behind the music, it's the story you're trying to tell, and the technique. Ideally, you should come secondary to that. No one goes to an art gallery because they're really excited about the paintbrush that the artist was using. They go there because they want to have that kind of visceral, emotional connection. And I've kind of been very guilty over the years of just obsessing about the paintbrush rather than the painting. I took it really far. I took it really, really far to the point where when I got fed up with my my hardware looping equipment that I was using, I decided to build my own machine, right? I wanted to build a software looping instrument, uh, which I call Beast. Um, I don't know about you, if you've ever tried to like develop uh, software before or even like learn a programming language or even just a, you know, a language, a normal language. When you first start, it's terrifying. And I, I didn't know much about, about software and about code. I, I felt the need at this stage, this was like uh, end of 2015, felt the need to create my own machine. Had so many pieces of equipment plugged into each other to try and like get the power I needed to kind of get these crazy ideas out of my head and out into the crowd's ears. Um, but every time you plug more equipment in, you get more and more problems and I was just battling these problems with like sound degradation and synchronization delays and latency and it was, it wasn't fun anymore. It just wasn't, it wasn't a playground. It was like I was this like, I don't know, this technician rather than a musician. So I thought this would be the answer if I built my own machine. Uh, and I spent, I basically spent the last two years making it. Like uh, I spent six months kind of developing the very first beta. Then I did another TED talk to announce it and kind of try it out in public for the first time. Um, and then I spent another six months kind of traveling around with it. And then uh, another year went by until the kind of climax for that particular project was when I was invited to speak at Ableton Loop, which is a conference where all the originators of the software I'm using, Ableton and Max for Live, which is the programming language I'm using within Ableton, all of the kind of Jedis and the, the gurus and the superheroes of, of this world were there. And it was like, I felt like such an imposter standing up on stage and acting as if I knew about this world. But um, the talk went really well. Uh, and, you know, lots of people really wanted to talk to me about exciting new potential developments in this world but there was something i wasn't telling anyone at that stage because i was too afraid it was it was too too raw the real truth was i didn't need any of this anymore like i i feel like i kind of made it all up to procrastinate what i really wanted to do which was to become like you know this uh, solo recording artist uh, which is something I'd always dreamed of, but, but I'd put off. Not long before I gave that talk, I'd done this headline show in London at Camden Assembly. And it was a bit of a, a landmark for me because it was the first time I did a show from start to finish, a whole show of only my own music. I didn't do any of my covers. I didn't do any of my like gimmicks or my gadgetry, or there wasn't anything particularly technically innovative about what I did that night. I just got up on stage, just me and my voice and my songs. I felt like I was standing there naked without my safety nets, without my kind of protection of, of these tricks that I know the crowd will love, like sampling them and mashing them up and creating it all live in real time and all this. It just, it just felt like I wanted to just sing a song. And I did. It was scary, but I did it. But the realization after this was that although I'd created this machine that could do all these innovative things, 
it worked just about, but it wasn't stable in any way. It was like, it was built out of my kind of amateur newbie code. And it was kind of held together with digital sticky tape and it would, it would fail all the time. Like sometimes I wouldn't even know if it would load properly. If I wanted to like create something new within the software, sometimes I'd have to wait for like 60 seconds, 120 seconds of the spinning beach ball of doom before I could even, you know, add a new instrument or you know load a new sample and it was just it was it was driving me absolutely crazy so about two weeks ago i did something terrifying um and i deleted it i just deleted all of that work i started afresh i started a a, a project file in 2014 and i haven't started a new project file since then it was a mess. It was so complicated. It was so such hard work for my poor computer. So it felt really good to to start a new one and to delete the whole lot. And I just I realised I don't actually need all of this. So my new project file had very little in it. It just needed the songs and the clips and the and, and the scenes that I needed to be able to sing these songs that I wanted to perform in Southampton last week. Um, it was like a new slimmer version of of my machine and. Um, and you know, whilst it was fun to kind of trigger the, the clips that I've been creating in the studio to create that kind of um, track to sing over, I kind of felt like if I just did that, I was kind of lacking some of the magic, right? So um, I'm a jazz drummer, that's my background. And, and I love to kind of, I love that feeling when you're creating with someone and, and, and you don't really know, neither of you know what's gonna happen next. I get this feeling like I'm flying and, and, and I, I can achieve it on my own. I have achieved it with my looping stuff and I have achieved it with my beatboxing work. But the real magic is when you do it with other people. So my, my dream at this point is to create my own band who are gonna be able to play the music I've been creating in the studio. If at any point I just turn around and turn around to them and say, go reggae. And like we can just we can just go off on a journey and I can kind of have that that excitement of being a band leader. But I'm not quite ready for that yet because this music is still quite quite early on and I'm just testing it out. So uh, I wanted to create an element of that on my own. So I've got myself some little mini timbales, which is these little drums here. And um, I've got myself um, these SPDs, which are like electronic drum trigger pads, so I could start playing like drums with sticks and just kind of, you know, embrace that side of my music a little bit more. Um, and I've got, a, you know, just a cymbal. And I just uh, kind of had that as a little spicy peppering on top of the music I, I was making. Um, and I sort of stood up there in Southampton and did this, this new approach. And again, it was scary. Again, I felt naked. Um, but again, I feel really proud of what I did. Um, so, yeah, you sometimes do just have to delete everything and, and start again. And what's scary about it is I can't just suddenly, if things are going wrong, I can't just suddenly whip out one of my old tricks because I've deleted all that functionality out of my machine. That is scary, but it's new and it's good to push yourself and do stuff that, that takes you to a new world. Yeah, I'm going to stop talking now because I really want to go and just carry on with this music. Thank you so much for listening. If you really want to be part of this journey with me and, and follow more of vlogs like this, please make sure you subscribe. Please do get involved and tell me how you're feeling about what I just told you. And if you're inspired to do anything or if you're working on something, you want to hear about that too. So guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, this is SK Shlomo signing out. Speak to you later. Bye. For the first time. Couldn't hold back Blind to the cuts Blind to the cuts Cuts, 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 cuts. Up in my head Been hit before Been hit before